fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail, Silver. Away! And here's news for all you mothers listening. The sparkle of lovely silverware sure sets off a table, doesn't it? And now you can own a complete set of exquisite Queen Bess pattern silverware for practically a song. All you need are the silverware coupons that come with packages of nourishing Cheerios, plus the small cost to cover mailing and handling. Imagine such an easy way to get gorgeous silverware with a charming floral wreath design. You're offered many extras, too. Iced teaspoons, dessert servers, even seafood forks. And this is a long-lasting silverware. Extra heavily plated. So fine in quality and appearance, it's perfectly at home in the most expensive table settings. So save those valuable silverware coupons in packages of Cheerios. Start making the most of them now. Enjoy really beautiful silverware. Just as your whole family enjoys Cheerios for breakfast. That's Cheerios. The ready-to-eat oat cereal that helps give you the strength and energy you need. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, riding through the hills, saw a man astride a burrow on the road ahead. As they neared the rider, they recognized him as Tom Fillmore, an elderly prospector who had worked in the hills for many years with no success. The masked man and Tonto had talked with Fillmore on many occasions in the past. And now, as they caught up with him, they greeted the old man. Oh, 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 easy. Hello there, Tom. How, oh, Tom? Oh, angel face. Uh, well, gone, gone, if it isn't the masked man and Tonto. Say, what are you doing back in these parts again? Eh? We're on our way to Central City, Tom. Yeah? T- gone, gone, that's where I'm going, too. On that burrow? Central City's a long way from here, Tom. Ah, take a long time to get there if you're not riding horse. Oh, you don't think I'm going to go all the way on this critter, do you? Of course I'm not. I'm going to stop off at Brookvale and buy me a horse. Brookvale's a very small town, Tom. You may not be able to buy a horse easily there. Besides, if you do, it'll be expensive. I'm not worried about expense. Why, doggone, I'm on my way to becoming the richest hombre that ever struck pay dirt in these parts. Do you mean you finally located gold? I sure do. In a spot nobody's ever dug before. The biggest vein I ever did see. Well, congratulations, Tom. That's wonderful. Mm, that heap good. That's why I'm heading for Central City now. Got to file my claim there and get the ore assayed. Tom, if you don't mind company, we'll ride as far as the crossroads with you. I'd like to hear about the strike you and made. I'd like to tell you about it. You're the only two I would tell. Least ways till I file my claim. Get moving, Angel Face. <laughs> Come on, sir. Get him up. Oh. It was near sundown when the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Tom Fillmore reached the crossroad that led to the small but notorious town of Brookvale. Before separating, the masked man warned Fillmore to be discreet while in the town. Old Tom assured him, Don't worry about me. I'm too smart for those hombres, tough as they are. I hope you're right about that. Sure, nobody would get any proof that I found gold, even if they think I have. Brookvale's only a couple of miles from here. Uh, you see these papers? Why, yes, Tom. That one in your left hand is a map, isn't it? Yep, showing where my claim's located. These others tell everything about the claim. Well, on my way to Brookvale, I'll hide these papers someplace so they'll be safe while I'm in town. 
When they start off for Central City in the morning, I'll pick them up again. And no one will be the wiser. After Tom Fillmore turned into the crossroad toward Brookvale, the Lone Ranger said, Tonto, we'll pitch camp in the hills a few miles from here. Somewhere near the main road. Oh, Timo, stop me. I think, too, that when morning comes, we'll stay near our camp until Tom Fillmore comes along. You see, until he files his claim, Tom will need protection. We'll give it to him. Come on, sir. Get him up, sir. Oh. Fillmore buried his map and claim papers a short distance off the road, about two miles outside the town of Brookvale. Uh, that's that. Nobody will ever notice it. Now to get to town. In Brookvale, he tied his burrow to a hitching post and registered in the town's one hotel, owned by Duff Logan, who also ran the largest cafe and gambling hall. In answer to Tom's questions... The hotel clerk told him... The only one who has horses in this town is Mr. Logan. You better see him. Tom, who had known Logan for years, found the man standing outside his cafe. Logan greeted the old man with tolerable contempt and sneered when Fillmore said... Logan, I want to buy a horse, and I'll pay you a fair price for it. Fillmore withdrew the bag of gold in his pocket that he had kept in order to buy a horse. Duff Logan, when he saw the metal, controlled his surprise... But his eyes gleamed with cunning. You, uh, you struck gold, huh? I'm not saying. All I'm saying is that I have what you see here. I need a horse to get to Central City. And I want to leave first thing in the morning. Tom, I'm in no position to sell the few horses I have. Still, well, I might be able to get you one before the night's over. Where are you staying at, hotel? Now, that's a silly uh-huh. question. Where else is it to stay in this town? <laughs> oh, you're right about that. I'll try to get your horse. I'll send word to you at the hotel when I do. Don't worry, Tom. Hours passed. Inside his cafe, Duff Logan sat at a corner table with two henchmen, Cliff Engel and Baldy Kenna. There was a girl with them, hostess Flora Dixon, but she took little part in the conversation. Logan was talking to the men. And Cliff, I told him I'd have a horse for him in the morning. Huh? Do you have one? Yes, but he's not going to use it. The clerk at the hotel just sent word that the old man's asleep in his room, snoring to beat all get out. Now, Baldy, I told you and Cliff what to do, remember? Yeah. We'll sneak into his room and go through his belongings. Duff, why don't you leave the old man alone? You've done enough of that sort of thing, haven't you? You have enough money to do you for the rest of your life. Nobody's asking your advice, Flora. But Duff, I... Baldy, Cliff, don't hurt the old man, huh? Not... Not unless he tries to hurt you. You make that distinction, huh, Flora? <laughs> uh, pay no attention to her, boys. Now get going. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Come on, Cliff. Yeah, I'm with you, Baldy. See you later, boys. The two crooks, Baldy and Cliff, entered Tom Fillmore's room. They searched the sleeping prospector's clothes and haversack and found nothing. They returned to the cafe and reported their fruitless search to Duff Logan. Logan, angry at first, reached a conclusion. He's a smart old geezer, that Tom Fillmore. He hasn't any maps or claim papers, huh? And there's only one answer. He's hidden them somewhere out of town at some spot where he can pick them up and take them along once he leaves here. And you think he stashed them away before he got here, huh? Yes. And all we have to do is follow him to where they're hidden, huh? No, Cliff. Do that and he'll never take you there. He'll be wise he's being followed, so he'll keep on going. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he would. But if he thought he wasn't being followed, or if he thought he was in safe company, well, that's another story. And that's what he's going to think tomorrow morning. He is? Hey, boss, where are you going? To get my darling Flora and tell her to get ready to do an act and take a journey. She's going to be Tom Fillmore's safe company, whether she wants to be or not. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She's skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. Cheerios.
Cheerios, Cheerios. You bet, Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say, She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. An hour before dawn the next morning, Tom Fillmore came down the stairs from his hotel room and walked across the lobby. Good morning, Mr. Fillmore. How are you? He opened the door and went into the street. To his surprise, he saw a horse and two-seated buggy nearby. A girl dressed in severe black was trying to retrieve the reins which had slipped to the ground. The horse was skittish, and her efforts were futile. Tom hurried across the otherwise deserted street. Here, lady, don't try to pick him up. Let me get him for you. All right, horse, all right, take it easy now, easy. That's it, hold still now. Let me get those reins. That's it. There you are, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. I... I was becoming frightened. There's nothing to be frightened about, ma'am. He'll be all right now. You want me to take him over to the stable? Oh, no, no, thank you. I'm just starting out. I'm Miss Smith, the school teacher in town here. You are? Doggone, I didn't know they had a school here. Oh, we're just starting one. I came over from Central City to make the arrangement. Central City? I'm on my Wait, way back there now. Central City? I... See, that's where I'm going. Oh, are you? I'm so glad. I, I... I mean, I... I'm sorry. I, I was going to ask you to ride along beside me with your horse until we got to the main trail. Uh, I don't have a horse, ma'am. I'm going by Burrow. I couldn't oh. get a horse. Leastways, not the way I wanted. How terrible. Horses are scarce in Brookvale. But a Burrow? Uh, Mr. Mr. Fillmore. Uh, Tom Fillmore, ma'am. How do you do, Mr. Fillmore? I'm Flora Smith. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. It's my pleasure. Uh, Mr. Fillmore, I hope you'll not think me bold, but, but Mr. Fillmore, you're welcome to share my buggy with me. Fine, ma'am. Tom Fillmore, elated at the unexpected turn in his fortunes, placed the burrow in the stable. Then, sitting in the driver's seat, he drove out of town in the buggy with a girl who called herself Flora Smith, seated beside him. As the pair left town, three men emerged from the cafe, where they had watched the entire scene from start to finish. <laughs> Duff Logan chuckled as he spoke to Baldy and Cliff. Well, it worked, boys. I told you it would. Say, that floor is a wonder, isn't she? What do we do now, boss? Baldy, you and Cliff get your horses. Then ride over the hills and take that shortcut to the main road. Wait about a mile or two the other side of the cross trail. You think he's hidden a map of papers or whatever he has somewhere along the cross trail? My guess is the answer is yes. If Flora's dressed as she was when she left here, completely in black, let the wagon go on. Don't bother with it. That'll mean Tom Fillmore didn't stop along the crossroad to pick up anything, huh? Right. But if he did stop to retrieve a map or anything else, then Flora will be wearing a long white veil. That'll be your signal to ride down and go through with a holdup. <laughs> Get up here. A few minutes later, the two crooks galloped their horses out of town into the hills, taking a shortcut that would get them to the main trail at least an hour before the horse and buggy would reach the spot. On the crossroad, an hour after they'd left Brookvale, Tom Fillmore stopped the horse and buggy. He made a lame and elaborate excuse for walking to a rock near the side of the road and digging into the ground near it. Flora, pretending wide-eyed innocence, watched him retrieve some papers from the shallow excavation. Then Tom walked back to the wagon. Guess you think I'm loco burying things like that, eh? <laughs> well, these papers are important, and uh, it sure is hard to climb into this wagon. 
hurts the bones. Let me help you, Mr. Fillmore. Oh, there. As I was saying, when I go into a town like Brookvale, I... What's the matter, Miss Smith? Oh, nothing. I, I'm simply putting on my veil. The sun's coming up, and the veil will help keep my face protected. It's on now, Mr. Fillmore. Shall we go? Uh, yes. Yeah. Get up there. I'm Come. sorry I interrupted you. What were you... The Lone Ranger and Tonto had broken camp and were waiting in the hills close to the main road, a few miles from the cross trail where they had left Tom Fillmore on the previous evening. The Lone Ranger spoke. The sun has been up for more than an hour, Tonto. If Tom Fillmore left Brookvale before dawn as he intended, then I... Sabi, look. Far down road, coming this way. Look like wagon. Yes, well, I use my binoculars. There. I hardly think that Tom would... Hello, on the other side of the road, you see? Ah, me see. Men ride down the trail from behind rock. They have bandanas across their faces, and there are guns in their hands. It looks like hold-up. It is, but we'll stop it easy. Come on, come on, come on. Two crooks, masked, rode from behind the huge boulder and stopped in the path of the horse and buggy, waving their guns menacingly. Just tighten that wagon and put your hands up high. Yeah. Make your move and I'll shoot you full of lead. Now, where are the papers we're after? Uh, the papers? I don't know what you're talking about. They're inside his coat. He put them in there a few minutes ago. Oh, no. Miss Smith, you... Never were... mind the Miss Smith line. Give me a man those papers. Uh, wait a minute. I'll get them, Florida. Easy, boy. I'll help you, Baldy. The two crooks dismounted and hurried to the wagon. Baldy, followed by Cliff, was the first to climb onto the seat. He grabbed Fillmore. All right, give me those papers. If you don't, I'll... Uh, hey, no, you... don't guard you. You're not going to have Cliff, him. Pull him off of me. Uh, All right, don't let that... Hey, hey. Baldy, Cliff, it's a masked man and an Indian. Get out of there. Hold him, hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Get down. Get down. Out of the way, Cliff. Let me shoot. Oh, my arm. Stand back before I run you down. Oh, no, my wrist is busted. Don't move, you two. Tom. Get back. I have a gun. I'll use it on this old man if you come an inch closer. Kimasabi, or have gun against Tom's back. Yeah. He's a friend of yours, is he? Well, if you don't want him to die, you'll back away from this wagon. Now. All right, Tonto. Back, Silver. Back down. Back away. At the Lone Ranger's words, Tonto moved to the left of the wagon. The masked man moved to the right. The girl yelled at the wounded crooks. Get your guns from the road. Baldy, get down there. Bad arm or no bad arm. Come on, boy. Let me help you. The Lone Ranger bent from the saddle as if to offer assistance. Flora raised her gun. Get back, I said. Get back or I'll... Keep it, gun, lady. Tonto behind her vaulted from his saddle onto the buggy. My arm! Get go of me, you're hurting. Baldy, Cliff! Stay right there, boys. You're covered. Easy, steady, big fella. I'm not doing anything, see? Me neither. My wrist is busted. Oh, lady, I'll take that gun. No. Uh, Tonto, I have it. Uh, he let go of them. You, you... All right. Now, what are you going to do with me, masked man? First, I'll pick up these guns. Now, tell me the story behind this hold-up. Tom, what is it? Oh, I've been played for a fool again, that's what, but I'll tell you. Tom told his story of the previous evening and about the events leading up to the present. When he finished, he said... And this girl here must be one of them. I not must be, she is. She knows these two. Yes, and undoubtedly knows Duff Logan better. I've heard of Logan. I've also heard he has an eye for pretty women, like this girl here. Don't talk about Duff Logan to me. He's the one who got me into this. I didn't want to do it. I never did anything like this before. And you'll never do anything like it again, because you're going to jail. No, please, no. I, I wouldn't have used that gun. I wouldn't have. I swear it. Listen no, to me. No, no, miss. But let the sheriff in Brookvale no. listen. Now, you two, get over there. Yeah, yeah. Otto, bandage them. Then we'll have them get back on their horses, and we'll all return to Brookvale. Uh -huh. We haven't time to waste. Come on. On the outskirts of Brookvale, the Lone Ranger brought the group to a halt. Although I don't care to ride into town in broad daylight wearing this mask. But I do want to make sure these people tell their story to the sheriff. Okay, Masabi. And what you do? I'll remain here with the girl and these two men. You get the sheriff and ask him to please come here. Ah, me go now. Get him up. Come. As Tonto rode into town, the Lone Ranger spoke to Baldy and Cliff. 
On our way here, Flora said she'd tell the sheriff everything about the crimes committed by Duff Logan and his gang. Including you two men. Stranger, I'll tell you a lot of things Flora doesn't know. Go ahead, Cliff. Tell the truth. And perhaps Baldy and Logan will go to the gallows alone. Get the facts straight for the sheriff. Who returned later with the sheriff and his posse. There on the outskirts of town, Cliff Engel confessed his crimes as a member of Logan's gang, augmenting the story already told by the girl. He ended... In the maps and papers that he stole from other prospectors are in Logan's closet. There's a panel in the rear of the closet, and that's where they are. Duff Logan, taken by surprise, was unable to prevent a search of his office. As Cliff Engel predicted, evidence was found behind the panel in the closet. Evidence that would send him to trial for murder and robbery. Any hope the man may have had was lost when Flora Dixon and Cliff Engel told him... I'm going to tell everything in court, Doc. Why, you... So am I. Ah. I've already told enough to the sheriff, haven't I, Sheriff? Yes. Maybe you'll think of more to tell after you and Baldy are finished with the doctor. One of my deputies will take you to the doctor now. And I'll get my burrow from the stable. You were smarter than I was, Logan, but I'm going to live to be rich. You're not. Right now, I'll ride slow and easy to Central City. Because I'm sure nobody will bother me in McLean now. What about your friend, the masked man? Him? Well, maybe he'll be watching out for me somewhere in the background like he was today. Yep, guess he will be. But he rode off without me now, saying I wouldn't have to worry. And when he says I don't have to, I believe him. Because he's the Lone Ranger. I don't do Your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. You'll never get discouraged if you keep in mind champions are made, not born. Let's see how Tom Fears, past catching end for the Los Angeles Rams, got on his way. At 12, Tom played football a lot, and many a bump is what he got. But he kept trying, never quit. And here's what helped to keep him fit. He ate his Wheaties every bit. Today, Tom sparks those touchdown drives. It's Sweetie still on which he thrives. Wheaties to Fears. There's a past combination that's been clicking steady now for 19 years. Real energy in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Tom, smack that pass. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.